This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, and here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're going to have a wonderful conversation. You've pre-gamed me a little bit. Amazing conversation. With one word that you wanted to tee off with. Treatment. 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 Yeah. So let me tell you the first time I heard that. Okay. I have a lot of teachers, right? You know that. Like my Ascended Masters, I just love them. So one of them is Reverend Ike. And I was listening to some videos from him a few years back, and he used the term spiritual mind treatment. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, never forget the feeling I had when he first used that term. I thought, this is some oaky crap here, you know, like. (laughs) So Now, up to this point, I had huge respect for him because I kind of understood where he was coming from, right? But I didn't know the philosophy of new thought or anything, but I trusted him, right? He said that I thought, this is ridiculous. This sounds like some kind of voodoo. Mm -hmm. And when I watched him perform, so to speak, the spiritual mind treatment, I thought, what are you doing anything here? What is this? And I remember being so, so disappointed because, you know, I kind of had him up here and he did that. And I thought, it must be me. (laughs) misunderstanding (laughs) this because there's no way, you know, this guy who was so learned in new thought, if you could get past his brand, which was really kind of cute anyway, but if you could get past his brand, he was a phenomenal teacher. But when he did that, I was like, okay, you know, and so that stuck with me. Was it the term spiritual mind treatment or that it seemed like it was supposed to be really fancy and exotic and wasn't? It was the term spiritual mind treatment. And because I had no frame of reference, I had no, you know, no way to translate what that probably meant. In my world, spiritual mind treatment really sounded, like I said, hokey and voodoo kind of stuff. And not that that's bad, but it just didn't, I couldn't get it. And when I watched or listened or tried to put it together when he was doing it, I wasn't getting it at all. I I just couldn't see what he was doing. And He didn't do it every time, but just sometimes. I remember just setting that aside completely. I said, this is the one thing I don't get and I don't want to because it's turning me off. I didn't understand that it was prayer. You understand that, right? I just, spiritual mind treatment. Are you trying to do something to me? And (laughs) also remember that was a different time in the 60s and 70s where you didn't want people messing with your mind. You're trying to get it straight. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, anything that was kind of threatening, that was not welcome. So then, you know, fast forward and here it comes again. And it's called treatment because you use that term Sunday treatment. And I thought, Uh, I remember how that word was kind of off for me. So, But I do want to talk about it because I think it probably doesn't get the attention that it should. And maybe a lot of people are confused because it's a very different term. Oh, it is. Absolutely it is. And just to close the loop before we go into the next round on this particular spiral, a spiritual mind treatment and a practical prayer for real result are the same thing. What I did is I took, for exactly the reason that you're talking about, actually that, that and a couple of other reasons, I relanguaged spiritual mind treatment as practical prayer. Because what we're doing in a practical prayer is to get a different experience of life. That's the same thing that spiritual mind treatment is doing. It seems to me, 
following these conversations that we've been having for the last year or so, that that's not the purpose of traditional prayer. Traditional prayer is about asking God up there, looking down upon lowly me, if perhaps I can get a favor and have something new come into my life if I deserve it. And a practical prayer is not that. A practical prayer is identifying that there is only one power, and it's the one that you would otherwise be looking up to, but it's understanding that power is within. And the person doing the prayer has access to all of that power. There is no permission required. There is no deservability. There is nobody keeping score. There's only consciousness. And whether we can state something new that we are desiring in our lives in a way that's believable to us, and that opens a channel for the newness to come into life in ways that we don't need to understand. So a spiritual mind treatment and a practical prayer are the same thing. A practical prayer and another prayer are way different because the agency is not with an external force that's making a decision about us. It's not judging us. It's all an inside job. So it is always possible for us to create a new experience. Now, spiritual mind treatment. The main reason that I wanted to relanguage that is because having been in a bunch of new thought communities for decades, it would be completely reasonable to overhear two long timers talking to each other and, you know, have one of them say, well, I was having a big issue. So I went and saw a practitioner to get a spiritual mind treatment and I manifested a demonstration and their friend would go, oh, that's wonderful, dear. And a newcomer would say, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> what, the, what did that mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an inside yeah. joke. It is absolutely an inside joke. And it puts up such a wall for people who are looking for this because do you really have to come in and be given a secret decoder ring and take a bunch of classes so that you can understand what that person meant was I was having an issue in my life. So I went and talked to a professional and they did a practical prayer. And the result is that I'm now having a different experience in my life because it's actually saying exactly the same thing, but without lingo, without jargon, without the need to misunderstand. Yeah. When you break it down, if you can do that, even with spiritual mind and treatment, it really is quite beautiful. Actually, the wording is quite beautiful, but with the work you have to do to get to that understanding, forget it. I remember hearing affirmative prayer and I thought, okay, so now, and that's before I knew that was the same thing. So I said, affirmative prayer. It's part of the same thing. I could do that. I can open myself up to that because affirmative is really important, especially, I mean, depending on backgrounds and all that business, but affirmative, I said, okay, I'll give that a shot. So it's just names and words. But then when you say treatment, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, whoa, okay. It sounds medical. Somebody right? hit the emergency break. Who is this person, you know, standing on the pulpit, who's now going to do something that should be done by medical professionals? And, whoa, you are treating? <laughs> no. Treating? Yeah. No, no, no. I don't. <laughs> you uh -uh. still have an allergy yeah. to it, and it's been years. It's been decades. They, since uh, the uh, because it's trust issues, you know. And I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. I'm just seriously open about a lot of things sometimes. Mm -hmm. There are two things we're going to do. And the first one is we're going to talk about the history and why it's called a spiritual mind treatment and what got us to the point where it needed to be relanguaged. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the details. But first, a break. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com.
Welcome, welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Barcioni. We're going to continue the conversation on treatment, practical prayer and treatment. You said you were going to define and give the history. I think it's important. So it's Dr. Marcioni here giving a spiritual mind treatment. Does that bring to mind sitting on somebody's (laughs) <laughs> on a piece on a piece of disposable paper in somebody's examining room. <laughs> We're not going to do that. So what I wanted to talk about is how the term spiritual mind treatment came to be, because it makes it a little bit understandable, and then you can step past it. And I'm going to actually start all the way back at the beginning with Ralph Waldo Emerson. So he was a Unitarian minister in Boston of some regard, and he decided that the Trinity didn't work for him. He said there were not three forces in the world. There was one, and the Trinity was not going to be it for him, so he couldn't do that. And he had to leave the church, and his resignation, actually, I think it was a commencement address at Harvard to the Divinity School there, is still notorious for the way to kiss off or piss off an entire (laughs) religion. And what he and his buddies, the Transcendentalists, were into was the notion that there is one. It's a unity. There is one power and presence, there is one life, there is one source, there is one enchilada, and we're all part of that one. And everything happens inside of the one, rather than being God over there, and me over here, and an intermediate over there, then I have to go through the intermediary to get to God. He said, no, it's all one. And he wrote some fabulous essays about that, the oversoul and self-reliance, and there are a bunch of them, which are foundational works, and he basically explained, this is the structure of the spiritual universe. This is how we are embodying that spiritual universe and individualizing it. And a lot of people said, wow, that's really cool. He's great. This is awesome. And his handyman, Thoreau, carried on the work and continued doing that stuff. And what Emerson didn't do was say, this is how it works. This is how you actually do the stuff that I'm talking about doing. He wrote those things in the early 1800s, mid 1800s, this watchmaker also in New England, I think he was in Maine, by the name of Phineas Parkhurst Quimby. He said, well, let's figure out how to make it work. So he would find people who had various issues and difficulties and problems, and he went about trying to heal them mentally. And so, you know, people would have tuberculosis and they need to be cured of tuberculosis so he would do this mental thing and for lack of a better term they called it a mental treatment and he started out by working with a mesmerist and a hypnotist because he needed to get people into that state where they're going to be receptive to whatever it happens to be and he did thousands and thousands of cases over the course of the i think 12 years that he was practicing 7,000 people who he treated and part way through he realized that first of all he did not need the mesmerist to put the person under the person did not need to be in a hypnotic state in order for that to work. So the mesmerist got dismissed from the whole thing. So then it was just Quimby and the client. And then it turns out that the person didn't actually need to be there either because Quimby could do the work remotely. People would send him letters about this is the issue that I'm having. This is the result that I'm desiring instead. And he would do the mental work himself and send back a letter saying it's done. And then he'd hear later from them that whatever the issue was had cleared up and they were now healthy and happy and whole. So that's where the notion of treatment came from. It was a mental treatment. And it had a spiritual component to it. Quimby didn't really identify his process that well. There's some notes that are available, but he was not a writer, he was a healer. And there were some people who watched him and some people who stole his techniques and realized that this is a spiritual process. The bigger idea we have of the divine creative power that's within us, that's accessible to us, the bigger the result that we can have. And so, Emma Curtis Hopkins went on teaching that. She had a bunch of students who she was teaching, Ernest Holmes among them. And he's the one who came up with kind of the format for a spiritual mind treatment. These are the steps that you go through, turning your attention to the infinite, identifying that that infinite power and presence is within. So whatever God can do, I can do too. And then knowing that that power is mine, this is what I'm claiming. That's the affirmative prayer part of it. But already putting ourselves into that awareness of unity with God. And then speaking that word of truth, inviting that creative power that creates galaxies to create this new thing. And then with gratitude, letting that go because this new thing is on the way. And that is a spiritual mind treatment called a treatment because Quimby called it a treatment because it was actually taking a condition and treating the the condition. It sounds medical. It sounds clinical. And that was a result of what happened along the way. Because, oh, by the way, all those people who were still praying, doing other things they were not doing spiritual mind treatments. They were doing prayers 
of beseechment or supplication to an external god, hoping that maybe they have deserved, they've earned enough god points to deserve a prize at <laughs> the bottom of their Cracker Jack box of life. <laughs> well, okay, so here comes my line. That was a that lot. That was a lot. That was the entire yeah, history of New Thought in six minutes. <laughs> and was it six About minutes? Six minutes right. <laughs> okay, so you can't unwrap all of that, but I got to go back to just one part of it, you know, and so you can dial back and listen to whatever piece you want. But affirmative prayer, you said, was when I was speaking, you said it's not quite the same, but it is the same. So I understand. I think I understand what you're saying, that affirmative prayer is a part of the treatment. It's like the step three part of the treatment. Is that right? Okay. Now, it's possible to do an affirmative treatment in a traditional prayer, and that's just by being positive. A very powerful sounding traditional prayer, prayer, and this is one that I use in classes as an example, is, oh God, please don't let them take my house. Now, (laughs) if you say, or... Oh, Jesus, or Oh, Allah, or Oh, some greater power than me, please don't let them take my house. There is so much wrapped up in that being a bad prayer. You know, on the one hand, it's a prayer, so you get a point for that. But what you're asking for is for something to not happen, which is them taking my house. Furthermore, it puts all the power outside of whoever's doing the prayer because there's a them that has the power that's trying to take away the house. And when we set ourselves up at the bottom of a power differential like that, then what are we actually asking for? To turn that into an affirmative prayer would be, oh God, please let me keep my house, which does not sound nearly as powerful as the don't let them take my house because that has drama, that has conflict, that has, <laughs> that has a bad guy in it. But saying something that is positive turns it into an affirmative prayer. And even though there's stuff about having an external God that we're turning to and beseeching and having doubt about whether or not we deserve it undermines us a lot. That first step of making it be an affirmative prayer is particularly helpful. And that's because from the New Thought perspective, we understand that there is one creative law that is always responding. And it only has one answer. It only says yes. When we open up a clear channel, understanding exactly what it is that we're desiring, the universal creative power says yes. God, don't know, no. So if I say, I want to not have poverty, what we're saying is, I, da, 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 poverty. And what we get is more poverty. (laughs) An abundance of poverty because it's an infinite universe. Take my house. Boom. There goes the house. Keep my house. Okay. We're getting better. Now there's the possibility of keeping my house. There's all of the, continue to be all of the questions about whether the person should be in that house, whether they deserve that house, not deserve it from a spiritual standpoint, but if there's a $3,500 a month mortgage and they make $35,000 a year, there's no way they should be in that house. The best thing that can happen for them is to get rid of the house, get rid of the bills, and then be able to find a place to live that will support their lifestyle. I'm not one to judge. I'm just saying that's the way arithmetic works. So an affirmative prayer is where we get out of trying to not have something negative happen, and we're looking for something positive to happen. And that is a huge first step, especially when we make that be the pattern of our thinking is to not be negative. That's another. That's, that's a lot, lot again. Because that's a. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's almost hands down. That's a whole nother show, really. When you talk about saying things in a negative way versus a positive way and what expectations you can have, that's a whole nother piece of it. So the whole thing is just quite huge. And, and you, can, you can't hardly take one piece without the other. This is a journey. I used that term the other day. It's a journey. So you could take it by faith till you figure it out. Well, yeah, and the advantage, the benefit of this is that we don't have to pray for important stuff. We can pray for trivial stuff and use that to prove that the process works. And then bolstered by our experience with that, we can start praying for things that we think are bigger. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I was doing that for a long time and I kept thinking, this stuff works, way. I need to apply this to something bigger. (laughs) (laughs) I got the the little things are just adding up and I'm grateful for it. But look, I need some attention over this side of the tape. If I'm going to hit the bullseye every time, (laughs) let me shoot for the bigger prizes. And then 
that's another level of not just faith, but yeah, do you have enough in, does your belief system allow you to ask for the bigger or to go for the bigger, you know, which is, that's another thing. It plays a huge role in whether you it happens or not. You know, you can ask for something and really don't believe that it could happen. And you know what? Not even know that you don't believe it until you do some work because that word work again. But yeah, yeah. you don't always know. Well, you can imagine spirit responding by saying, who are you to think it's bigger? <laughs> 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 Who are you to think that's big? Yeah. I mean, so, you know, people would think, all right, there's getting a date on Saturday night and there's having remission of a cancer. And so we would think, well, the cancer is bigger. And the infinite creative power that we are using to address this is the one that creates galaxies. Now, I say that a lot and it's really easy for it to kind of, you know, roll off your, like water off a duck. This is a power that creates galaxies. Does it think that cancer remission is bigger than the romantic encounter? No. Neither one of them are the size of a galaxy, and it's cre- it can create that. So this, this, anything we're asking for is chump change as far as the universe is concerned. There is no bigger. But that's another understanding mm-hmm. that we have to have. And it's just a lot of layers or steps in the understanding, which are just really wonderful. But going along the way, I think it's helpful to say, to keep from getting discouraged. And I'm remembering times of discouragement. This is not all there is. Okay. So if something didn't work for me, I wouldn't say that God didn't want me to have it. Right. Because back in the the old days, on the other side of the road, (laughs) it was God says, yes. God says, no. God says, maybe. Well, that's all too confusing to me because I got to figure out what's, you know, the reason for each one. So when you said, when I learned that God says, yes, I said, good, this is like one thing I got to figure out. I'm good with this. But if it didn't work, I'd have to figure, well, it didn't work. But that's almost like, you know, reverse engineering, which is easier, actually, than going forward. Why didn't this work? It's something in my belief system that said, yeah, I asked for it, but I was like, hey, you know, maybe this will work. Let's mm-hmm. see. I'm not sure. Yep. Okay. Instead of up the ante, let me let it down a little bit so God can, <laughs> <laughs> don't give God too much to do. <laughs> yeah. So God can handle this, right? Yeah. The maybe or the no comes from our consciousness. If we're desiring something and we're believing that it's a maybe thing, then the universe is saying yes to our maybe. And then we get to say, well, God said maybe. Or if we believe that this can't possibly happen because it's never happened before, that would be completely unprecedented. Then when we say, this is what I want and I don't believe it, then God says, yes, you don't believe it. And it's going to show up not happening in your life just the way you believe it. And that's really annoying. So I got around it by writing it down. Just write the thing down. If it didn't work, write it down and just look at it. Because if the answer is yes, the problem is not with God. The problem is with me. And yeah, I was willing because like I said, I'm late to the party. I don't have five years <laughs> to figure out how, to, <laughs> you know, I want this to work now. And I got a lot of reasons for that too, you know? Yeah. I don't know if I want to break this to you now, but five years from now, as you're still doing this stuff and you're still deepening, you're still getting better at it. You'll realize, oh, okay. I did spend five years at this, but it was a pretty happy five years because it, kept on building and building and building. Don't get me wrong. First of all, I'm going to be here a long time. So five years is not that big a deal. However, I don't want to spend five years going around, around, around the bush, right? Because there's other things to learn. Mm -hmm. This is not the hardest. It's a biggie, but it's not the roughest. So like, let's get on with it. Have you heard me before talk about the upward spiral? Yes. Okay. Well, that's what you're doing. I mean, it seems like you're going around in circles, but you're not because every time you come around in the same neighborhood, you're doing it from a higher perspective, a higher level of consciousness. So even when it's like, oh, this is happening again. Why am I dealing with this again? It's like, that's the season for that. It's like sitting in your house, being perfectly happy all summer. And then it gets cold. It's happening again. Yeah, that's what happens. But this year, maybe we're better prepared. We put in the new windows. We, you know, invested in polar tech. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or whatever it is. And, and this cold season is not as bad as the last cold season. And 
every time we go through that, we can be better prepared and more amenable, and it just works better for us. Yeah, I, I'm not fighting that it's not true. That's what I mean. I don't think you ever learn the whole thing. I gave up thinking that, not just with practical prayer, but everything about new thought and life, period. You know, you, things are going to always unfold. It's always going to be a new learning. I'm open to it. I just, I don't want to fight, right? I'm just saying, okay, let me just step back and try to figure out or understand how this works. But to bring it full circle, though, I can go back, and I did go back to Reverend Ike to hear it again with new ears and new understanding. And, you know, I said, that's what you're doing? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I got you. I see how this works. That's more simpler than I I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us take another break. And on the other side, we will do a practical prayer. I have some ideas about what to make it about, but we'll talk about that. Get inspiration in an instant. God Calls are the gentle and uplifting moment of truth to help you remember that the bright light of God's love is shining right now as you. It's your God Call with Reverend Bill. Start your two-week free trial today and you'll get a phone call four times a week from Reverend Bill with an uplifting half-minute message filled with insight, wisdom, story, and fun. Let your light shine. You can answer the call to listen to it live or let it go to voicemail so you can hear it later. After the free trial, your subscription is just $5.95 a month. The details are at godcall.org. God calls are disruptive, intentionally. Whenever you write something, put on a gold star. They take you away from your routine to remind you about the truth of who you really are. They come at random times between 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., so you won't be expecting them. And somehow, the message is exactly what you need to hear at the time. Magic is loose in the world. It's a moment of motivation in the middle of your day. Find out more and start your two-week free trial now. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. You said we were going to do... We're going to do a prayer. Uh, I was thinking during the break that the prayer, usually it's like one or two words describes what the prayer is going to be about. And this time, I would like to do a prayer for a deeper awareness of the creative process and my part in it for each of us. So that's a prayer that we can do to increase and deepen our awareness of how the creative process works and how we're activating it. Hmm because this is a dance that we're doing with the infinite. This is not something that we're sending a note to the infinite and saying, please do something, and it comes back. We get to play our part in it. So does that sound like a good way of <laughs> of wrapping up this episode, which has been a, a spaghetti plate of connections? It sounded really big and deep at first, but when you said a dance, it's a dance we do with the infinite. Yeah, that's very sweet. and And it makes it, very welcoming. We will do that. Should I say, let us pray like the traditional religions do? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why don't you do that? Because sometimes, you know what? I don't know when you're starting. I told you that before. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't realize that that's the reason that people said, let us pray. Yeah, because you got to know when you, you know, when there's a little, not, you know, sermonette or a little talk, right? You got to know when the talk is, and then you can start. You know what I mean? There's got to be a trans. I can only imagine how I look sometimes, right? <laughs> when I, because <laughs> I'm listening, I have reasons also. Like I'm on here and I'm on here for whatever. But the other reason I'm on here is that I learn and I'm listening. And you're introducing the prayer and I'm like all into it. I've been taking notes sometime while you're doing that. Then I'll happen to look and you're praying. I'm thinking, oh, oh you already started. I have been so disrespectful because my eyes are not closed. You know, so say something. I know I'm not by myself. Somebody else is with me. Okay, fine. We've talked about stealth prayers though, right? Which is how you can actually do a practical prayer without using the God language and have people not realize that it's a prayer. It still works. That's another broadcast. Okay. But there's I'm writing this down. There's an example of one of those in the practical prayer book. But I will not do this as a stealth prayer. I will do this one as a fully semaphore signaled prayer. Therefore, let us pray for a deeper awareness of the creative process and my part in it for each of us who is listening. 
as we close our eyes or go to a soft focus as it is safe to do so and become aware of that infinite creative power, that one divine power and presence and open ourselves to the awareness of just how powerful that is. In the beginning, there was only that one power, infinite potential and nothing else existed. And that one through intention began sharing itself as its creation. That's either the big bang exploding and leading to everything that exists in our manifest universe. That's the evolution story, or it's the garden of Eden. In the beginning, there was darkness and void and God said, let there be, and there is. And that same unfoldment, there was nothing but God to begin with. That is an infinite creative power. And the creative process is the means whereby the divine goes from pure potential of energy and substance to whatever it is in the manifest universe. That is the creative process. The intention for let there be and the creative law responding and bringing that be into existence. And consciousness by its nature replicates that process. So I know that each one who is listening to this prayer today has that consciousness, has the ability to activate that creative law in the same way that the infinite did by saying in our own mind, let there be, and inviting that newness in. That is the only creative process. And the creative law always says yes. It always responds to consciousness. It is always responding to consciousness. And sometimes we are able to use it poorly by inviting things into our experience which we don't want. That's fear or doubt or worry. When we are focusing our attention on the things that we don't want, we're activating the creative process and actually inviting those things into our experience. So we turn away from the things that we don't want and choose instead the things that we do. Instead of being lonely, I wish to be in loving relationships. Instead of poverty or struggle, I wish to be in prosperity and abundance. Instead of being in illness or discomfort, I choose to be in health and vitality. Instead of being stuck in work that doesn't appeal to me, I choose to share my creative gifts in a way that brings good into my life and into the world and that's valued and treasured. We are always free to choose, always, each of us, free to choose to let loose the limitations that might have existed in the past and turn ourselves, turn our awareness to that infinite creative power and invite it to create something new. And I claim right now a deeper, more profound awareness of that creative process and our part in it for each one who is listening now, going through that ever upward spiral of perhaps starting with something that we think of as small and inviting that in and seeing it come into our lives and having that reinforced for us that this creative process works to deepen our awareness of how it works and how to work it. And each one listening is now activating that power, claiming their new truth and inviting something new into being. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for the new experiences that are coming about. I'm grateful for that expanded, deeper awareness. I'm grateful for the willingness of each one to turn away from what has been and pivot towards what can be. And I'm grateful to be able to speak this word of intention, of invitation, and release it into that same creative law that has been responding since the beginning of time. And to know without question, doubt, or hesitation that it is already saying yes, this good is already underway now. And so I let it be. I let it go. And I know it's so. And so it is. Practical Prayer Podcast with Rev. Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Rev. Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org.